But my dear brothers and sisters, unless we forget before we proceed, although we thank the life, I thank the life, I thank the Lord for the life of our children, but equally important, I thank the Lord for all your lives, especially their teachers, especially their mentors, especially their tutors, and that is no other than the music ministry team. Thank you very much. I, I believe that the Lord deserve a clap for your life as well. Bigyan po natin ng palakpak ang buhay ng mga music team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Thank you for the life of our music team. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Are we ready? Are we ready? There is a better food before the lechon will be delivered. And uh, let's enjoy that food. Amen po. Amen. Um, in Acts chapter 20, I believe. At yan eh, quiz. In Acts chapter 20, while Apostle Paul was uh, teaching the people in Philippi, Amen? And because Apostle Paul will not return that truth anymore. Because Apostle Paul is going to Jerusalem. And there is a revelation that that is it. After he will turn his back to Philippi, he will not see them again. Amen? So he gathered the Christians in Philippi. And he began to spoke with them. And because Apostle Paul is leaving the following day, the word of the Lord in Acts chapter 20, it says in there that Apostle Paul continued to preach and preach and preach. So I know that if you are one of them that think that, ah, Pastor, every time that you preach, it's very long, nakaka bored. Um, if you look at uh, Acts chapter 20, I'm glad na hindi ko pa nasusurpass yung uh, time ni Apostle Paul. If you look at the life of Apostle Paul, amen. Uh, during that time, he was preaching, preaching, preaching nearly towards the morning. And there is a guy called, sino yun, Ate Ani? Quiz. There is a man, a young man called Eutychus who fell asleep and fell on the, the sa window on the third floor and he died. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, Eutychus has a good motive considering that he was there to receive the message of Apostle Paul. But he did not stay. So my dear brothers and sisters, watch out that you do not fall where you are seated. Okay? Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Father, truly indeed, Lord, that it is an awesome and amazing day today, O God. Truly indeed, Lord, that you have answered our prayers today, Father, through the life of the children, Father God. And we thank you, Lord. This is the culmination, Father, of years in years of prayer, years of encouragement, Father God. And we thank you so much. And Father God, as they sail towards that um, uh, path, O Lord God, in the ministry, we continue, Father God, to pray and ask that you go with them, that you walk with them, and that you step with them, Father God. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful opportunity again that you have gathered us here today. This is your day. This is your holy day, a holy convocation, Father God, where you have mandated all mankind to give and offer this day unto you. So, Father God, living this day, your holy day, Father, Lord, may we live it truly in accordance with your will, Father God, where there are no other focus but you and your, you alone. And Lord, thank you for the words that you are going to uh, give us. Thank you, Father, for the revelation and conviction that you have given your servant, Father, I acknowledge that these are all your words, Father God. Lord, I do not have knowledge and I do not have understanding that goes with it. At Father God, because what I desire is the wisdom and the knowledge that comes from you. Father God, hide me behind you. Clothe me, O Lord, with your most precious blood, Jesus, so that my dear brothers and sisters, both people gathered here and people tuned in online, that they will not just be mere listening to this voice and looking at this person standing father but lord let every word that will come out from this mouth is touched and anointed by you O god and lord i pray 
that you give us that receptive heart, that receptive spirit. Open our spiritual senses, Father, in order for us to receive full message, Father God, and our mind will not wander off. Father God, challenge us as well, Father, to take down notes. Challenge us as well, Father God, to take pointers, O Lord, so that when we go home, we base that, O God, parallel to your scriptures to make sure, Father, that everything that is being said, O Lord, comes out, O Lord God, from your scriptures. And this is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good and blessed morning, church. And like what we've said, today is a historical day because most of the children, this is their first day, that their first step in the ministry. But it is a historical day as well, my dear brothers and sisters, because you know why? This is the first time that we have three lovely and wonderful couples celebrating their anniversary at the same time. Amen? Hallelujah! So the, to the three wonderful couples who are celebrating their anniversary today, in behalf of all, in behalf of the church, in behalf of our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, especially those who are not able to be with us today, Sister Grace, Brother Alan, Brother Trevor, Sister Milita, Brother Michael, Sister Joanna, blessed and happiest wedding anniversary to the three of you. Amen. Can we resonate that uh, greetings, my dear brothers and sisters? Can we greet our brothers and sisters? It truly is a wonderful privilege to celebrate your special day. Amen especially in the midst of people dear to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I think uh, Ati Grace and Kuya Alan, Trevor and Milita, Michael and Joanna are very happy, but there is no happier than the parent. That's Irene is here. There is no happier than the parent to see his or her children celebrate their anniversary. Amen. But we know that the most happiest is no other than our parent, our God the Father. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, no wonder that when I was praying and I was asking for the Lord for the message, He has given us a message on relationship. He has given us a message on marriage. Amen? And my dear brothers and sisters, itong mensaheng ito, this is not only a message for everyone who claims to be a good couple, who claims to be a wonderful couple, who claims to be a perfect couple. This message as well is tailored for, um, uh, for people who might be in one way or another struggling in their relationship, who might be in one way or another experiencing trials and tribulations in their relationship. Amen? And... If you are unmarried, this message is for you as well. Because your married will come to you and will confide their issues, will confide their problems to you. Amen? So if you are unmarried, it is very important as well. This message is for you so that when your married friends will come to you, you know how to advise them. You know how to speak and talk with them. Amen, church? And for each and every one of us, in as much as in the context, this is about love, this is about relationship and marriage. But is it not that the basic underpinning goal of our living, my dear brothers and sisters? We are all connected by relationship. Amen? A husband and wives is connected by a relationship. A parents and son is connected by relationship. Siblings are connected with the relationship. All of us, my dear brothers and sisters, we are all connected in a relationship. Amen. Are we not brothers and sisters in the Lord? Amen, church? And that is the spiritual relationship that bonds us. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this message po, is for each and every one of us. Amen? Hallelujah. No? Praise you, Jesus. I stand in here. 
mabuti walang mga bagong ano, walang mga bagong tao because otherwise if there are new people, they probably will say what qualifies you to stand there and uh, talk about relationship? What qualifies? What is your qualification to stand in there and talk about relationship? I agree with you na wala po akong qualification. I am not qualified to stand here and talk about relationship. I agree with you that my 17 years of married life with my lovely wife, of course, is not a qualification. But my dear brothers and sisters, we are not talking, I'm not gonna be talking about myself. I'm not gonna be talking, I'm not gonna be inputting about what I know. Because we will be talking about the word of the Lord. Amen po? Are we ready? Are we ready, church? Who are excited? Who are excited? Parang kilala ko yan, ah. Parang kilala ko yan, ah. Who are excited, church? Amen. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus said that, you know, in the parable of the wedding banquet, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. Amen. What are we aspiring for? Especially in coming here. What are we aspiring for in honoring the Lord? John 3.16, what is the aspiration of that? To be able to step into that kingdom of God. Amen po. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, in this parable it says in there that the kingdom of God is like a king who arranged a marriage for his son. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that that king is no other than our God the Father. And we know that his son is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we know that the bride is no other than in the Lord. We know that the groom is the body of Christ. Christians. Yeah, what is that? Ano? Hallelujah. Praise, praise. Hallelujah. Wala. Shall I, ano? challenges that we grow. Amen? Hallelujah. It is in challenges that our patients are being tested. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, sabi nga natin that the kingdom of God is like a wedding. And in Mark chapter 4, verses 31 to 32, it says in here, again, Jesus said that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Can everyone will say mustard seed? Which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Smallest seed. Can we say smallest seed? Yet when planted, say planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all plants. Say largest of all plants. With such big branches that the birds can perch in each shade. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, the kingdom of God is like that small mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seed. And yet, when it is planted, it grows to become the largest plant in the garden. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And on the, the, the uh, parable that we uh, heard earlier, the kingdom of God is like a wedding. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, no, you know yung idiomatic expression, totoo pala yun, that a marriage is a match made in heaven. Amen. But before we forget, so our thunders are made in heaven as well. Amen. So our thunders. So marriage is a beautiful and wonderful thing, but sometimes it is like a battlefield as well. 
Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, kung titignan natin yung passage, no? I want us to liken the garden to this world. I want us to liken that garden, it says in there, the parable of that mustard seed. And I want us na to liken that garden to this world. That garden to this society that we are living in. That garden to be that community that we are living in. Amen. And ano yung sabi niya doon? In that garden, there are many what define, defines a garden. The plants. Amen, church. How can you say that it's a garden if there are no plants in it? What defines a garden is those plants. Amen. And God said, Jesus said, that small mustard seed became the largest plants in the garden. Amen. So if we think about that that garden is this world, this community, this society that we are living in, and we say that what defines a garden, those are the plants. How about this world? How about this community? How about this society that we are living in? What is the basic unit of this society? Anyone? Family. Amen. So if we liken those plants as a family, no? Like what we've said, you cannot call a garden without plants. You cannot call a society, a community without families living in it. Amen, church? Are we in agreement with that? But where did this large plant started again? Remind me. From that small mustard seed. How did that small mustard seed grow? By it being planted. Amen. So if we think about that small mustard seed is the love that we have. Think about that small mustard seed is the love that we agree to nurture into a relationship. Things are happening in one go. For example, we'll pick Ate Grace and Kuya Alan. Amen. When they had that love, when they begin to have that love 21 years ago, yeah? 21 years ago, my dear brothers and sisters, Kuya Alan felt that love. Ate Grace felt that love. Amen, church? And that tiny, small love, they agree to nurture it in a relationship. Amen, church? Are you with me? And when they even agree further, they say that, Shall we grow this love together? Shall we nurture this love together? By how? Planting it in a marriage. Amen. And when that marriage, that love was planted, it grows to become a plant. And it says in here, in that garden, some are small plants, some are medium-sized plants, and some are large plant and this mustard seed is the largest of all plants. Amen. Bear with me if I use my parents as an example. Amen. I want to thank the Lord and bless the Lord for the lives of my parents. Bear with me if I use them as an example. My mom and dad had their, that love and that small tiny village in the mountain of Cordillera. Amen. In their young age, they had that love. And they planned to nurture that love together. Small mustard seed, remember. They planned to nurture that love together. And they planted that love and marriage, my dear brothers and sisters. And it grew. As a matter of fact, that tiny love that started from that remote, mountainous part of Cordillera, it brought them 10 children plus 9 in-laws. Our eldest brother died unmarried. Amen? And it brought them a further 36 grandchildren in their spouses and it brought them 12 great-grandchildren scattered across four continents. Amen. So is that not from that small mustard seed, it grows to become a big plant. And I believe, my dear brothers and sisters, 
that you have a better story to tell. I believe that you have a better example to tell. But if you are not there yet, stop before you proceed and think about how can I better where I am standing today? Is that not what it means by the word of the Lord? Is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? So that let's stop. Although this pertains to relationship and marriage, but for each and every one of us, wherever we are right now, let's stop. Are we satisfied where we are standing? Me, I'm not satisfied. There is a lot of things to improve. There are a lot of things to better. Because the moment that you sat, you, you're satisfied and contented, my dear brothers and sisters, that means that you don't need the Lord further. Amen. That's the reason why. That seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and the Lord will flow out satisfaction. Amen. That's the reason why we are being encouraged to continue to pursue to continue and come to the Lord. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us be encouraged. Let us be encouraged. Amen, church? And better our story. We want our children, our children's children, and the generation and generation to come to tell a wonderful story of that small mustard seed and became the largest plant in the garden. Amen, church. Hallelujah. But my dear brothers and sisters, we know that it is not easy as it appears to be. Amen po. Hindi po ganun kasimple. Otherwise, there will be no divorces. Otherwise, there will be no broken families. Otherwise, there are no abandoned relationship. It's not that easy. Amen. But just like, Every planting, it is not enough to have the choice seed. Diba? Pag magtatanim ka, diba pipiliin mo yung pinaka mabuting punla. But even in relationship, not everyone who comes to you and they say they love you, that they'll, you're gonna say yes. Amen? You need to choose the best seed. Amen? And if you are searching, if you are looking, where do you find the best qualifications, my dear brothers and sisters? If you are searching, if you are looking, you can find the best qualification to be here. Amen. Amen, church? So in every relationship, it is not enough that you choose the best seed. It is not enough that you plant it and wait at the end to grow. Wait at the end, hoping for a produce. Farmers, what do we need to do? Kaming dalawa ni Brother Ramon, farmer. Sino pa bang mga farmer dito? Amen. Farmer, what do we need to do? It is not enough for us to have that choice seed. It is not enough for us to put that into a fertile soil or fertile marriage. Kailangan din natin itong mga bagay na to. Number one, water them. Water that seed. Water that seed that you have planted. Amen, church. But the good thing is, you know, if you cannot water it, the Lord can do that for you in the form of the rain. But still, we have, meron to, po tayong duties and obligations. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, watering that seed or that plant is very vital for the life and growth of the plant. Amen po? And so is in our relationship. No? Watering that plant, watering our relationship, diligan ng ating mga relasyon, these are the things that you do without even overcomplicating it. Ito yung mga bagay na that these are the things that we naturally do. And what is that? Giving attentions. Amen. Giving attentions to our relationship. Sinagot ka ngayon, hindi ka magparamdam 
Hindi ka magpakita, hindi ka mag-text. One day, two days, three weeks, one month. What will happen? Break. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, these are the natural things that you do. Give attention. Give words of compliment. Give words of comfort. Spending time together. Giving flowers. Giving presents. Being nice with each other. Diba? Basic relationship goals. Amen, church? But the Bible said, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers all over multitudes of sins, my dear brothers and sisters. This is where that relationship sometimes fail. We cannot contest that as a human being, we are a sinner. Amen? We are a sinner. And what covers that sin? The love of God to us. So the same thing in our relationship, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? That we are encouraged to above all. Meaning, above everything that you do, above all this, uh, above all this attention, word of compliment, comfort, spending time together, flowers present, being nice with each other. It says in there, above all, love each other deeply. Sabi niya dun. Love another at full strength. Sabi niya dun. But in here with me, it says in there, love each other deeply because love covers all the multitudes of sin. No one is perfect, my dear brothers and sisters. No one is perfect. There is only a flawed husband. There is only a flawed wife. No one is perfect. If you are looking for that perfect husband, if you are looking for that perfect wife, there is no such thing. Because you know why? You yourself is imperfect. Amen, church? Amen? Stop praying for God to mold or to shape your husband to mold or to shape your wife in the person that you want to be. Start praying for the Lord to grow that love in you deeply. Amen? Because if you have that love deeply, it doesn't matter if your husband and wife have crooked, uh, have crooked teeth. It doesn't matter, my dear brothers and sisters, if they cannot speak English very well. It doesn't matter, my dear brothers and sisters, if they are a little bit simple in your liking. If you love your husband and your wife deeply or in any relationship, friendship, brothers and sisters, if you love them deeply, love covers all the multitudes of fault. Amen po. E regardless na sa sentence ng husband mo, walang age sometimes. Diba? Hallelujah. Amen. Love covers all the multitudes of sins, flaws, and imperfection. E regardless of gabi-gabi, nagsasuffer ka sa hilik. Diba? Cover the mouth with pillow. Love covering the mouth with pillow. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5.11, it says in there, Encourage one another and build up each other, just as the fact that you are doing. Wow. Encouraging one another. Amen. Encouraging one another and building up each other individually, because we are an individual person, individually there are challenges at work, in our extended family in the Philippines, or even corporately as a couple, there will be challenges. Magkakaroon kayo ng problema. Magkakaroon kayo ng ups and down. And the answer, my dear brothers and sisters, are not the solicitors. The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, are not the mediation officer. Amen. The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, 
is not alcohol. The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, are not vices. The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, are not your friends who doesn't even have anything good to advise. Alam mo yung friends na hindi mo pa man sinasabi yung problema mo, nag advice na, hiwalayan mo! Diba? There are friends that are like that. Hindi mo pa man pupunta ka sa kanya, imbis na sasabihin mo sa kanya na nakatanggap ako ng, ano, ng uh, from HMRC, parating ka pa lang, sinasabi niya na kagad, hiwalayan mo! So my dear brothers and sisters, If you have trials and problems and tribulations, the only thing and the best thing that you have is each other. Amen. Come and talk with each other. Sabi nga ng Panginoon, in your, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go away with issues not being resolved. Because don't even try to cross that bridge. Because you know, if you start that with one night, that one night can easily now translate it to two nights, three nights, four nights, five nights, one week. Buti sana, especially this winter, buti sana kung lahat tayo, mayroon tayong garden shed. Paano naman yung mga katulad naming wala? Di ba? Saan kami pupulutin? No? So my dear brothers and sisters, encourage each other. Let us build each other. Amen. Ephesians 4, 2-3, Be completely humble and gentle and be patient. Bear one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. If ev Of everything that it says in there sometimes, mga kapatid, meron lahat tayo nun bar one. Sometimes we are completely humble. Sometimes we are very gentle. Sometimes we are very patient. Sometimes we bear our relationship in love. But where we fail is, we do not make every effort. Mga kapatid, if you are making that every effort, there should be no failure. Amen. Because if you look, The word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Kung makikita mo na mahina, kung makikita mo na hindi possible, make every effort. Ano pa kaya yung pwede kong gawin? Ano pa kaya yung pwede kong gawin? Giving a bunch of flowers, giving an LV bag does not do the trick. How about doing two LV bags? How about doing three LV bags? But no, what we meant is in the spiritual. In the spiritual. If you prayed, if you prayed, if you prayed, and it seems that heaven is shut, maybe the Lord is encouraging you to fast. Maybe the Lord is encouraging you to commit. Maybe the Lord wants that security and reassurance from you that Lord, I offer this relationship to you. Lord, remember, Hana, amen, Hana, barren. He did not just come and said to the Lord that, Lord, give me a son. He said, Lord, give me a son and I will return it back to you. Lord, give me a relationship and I will return it back to you. Establish my situation and I will return it back to you. Hallelujah. Amen, church. Colossians, no? Do not give up. Do not get tired. Do not surrender. Because making every effort, it says in there, you do not stop up until the desired outcome. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Amen. So whatever it is that you do, more than doing to that opposite end of that relationship. Think that you're doing that for the Lord. May yung kanta natin kanina, that it is no longer us that live, but 
Christ. Amen. So the moment that you begin, the moment that you want to fight your partners, your husband, your wife, think about that hangon. Mukha ni Kristo ang nakikita ko sa kanya. Amen, church. Hallelujah. If you ever come across that moment na I am tired of doing this in that for him or for her, then do it for the Lord. Amen. Do it for the Lord. Your husband, your wives are the image of our God creator. Amen. Whatever it is that you do unto others, Jesus said, you have done it for me. Hindi po ba nasa Matthew 25, 40 yan. Amen. And lastly, sabi niya rito, let us consider how we may spur one another towards love in good deeds. Hebrews 10, 24. Amen. How can I stimulate my partner? How can I stimulate my wife? How can I stimulate my husband to become a better Christian? To become a better person? Amen, church. Next, my dear brothers and sisters, after watering it, what do we need to do? Cultivate, as part of cultivating, my dear brothers and sisters, clean it. Take away the, the grasses, weed. Diba? When we mean weed, uh, we separate that from the other weed. Amen. Kasi dito sa UK, sinabi mong weed, iba ang naiintindihan nila. Amen, church. So in every plant, you need to weed it out. Linisan mo. Bunutan mo. And in the principles of weeding, my dear brothers and sisters, you need to weed the plant as early as you can. Amen. You need to weed the plant as early as you can. Because what does grasses do to the plant? If you remember, my dear brothers and sisters, sa parable of the sower in Mark chapter 4, what does this weed, what does this grasses do to the plant? They choke the growth of the plant. Amen. They hinder the growth of the plant. And pag lumaki na yan, tsaka mo palang bubunutin, sabi ni Kristo, your plant as well can be damaged. That's why in the principle of weeding, taking away those grasses out of those seed relationship, do it as early as you can. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Before that weed, before that grass will germinate, before it mature, before it grow. So same thing with your issues, same thing with your problem. Resolve it as soon as possible. We said earlier, do not wait for the night to pass without resolving anything. Amen, church? Hallelujah. We need to weed it as early as we can. We need to resolve these issues in our relationship as early as we can before they will create cracks in our relationship. And weeding, my dear brothers and sisters, or removing the weed, it's a very simple and practical things, my dear brothers and sisters. Husband, simplest and practical example of weeding in our relationship, sometimes it just probably means putting your laundry, your dirty linen in the laundry basket. Putting your socks in the laundry basket. Sometimes that's a problem. Friday's laundry day, nagkalat doon, nasa ilalim ng kama, nandun sa sulok. So sometimes, may di, buti sana kung tayo yung naglalaba. Ano? Sometimes it's always, well, I, I don't want to generalize it, but sometimes sila yung the wife had more patient. And sometimes, cracks on a Friday start, maglalaba si Miss, nasaan ito, nasaan, ang daming kalat. Amen. So weeding is simple as putting your dirty linen and laundry in the basket, my dear brothers and sisters. No, It could also mean, husbands, that if you are on Facebook, if you are on Instagram, avoid tuning in on what or watching those uh, those girls who have nothing to buy for clothes. Diba? Huwag niyong i-follow yung mga, yung mga uh, TikTok doon na wala silang pambili ng mga damit. Amen. And if you are a wife at yung kaya mong bilhing damit eh hanggang dito lang, ask from your husband. Bibigyan ka niya, makakabili ka ng ano. 
mas mahaba. Amen. And pag pupunta kayo sa mall, bibili kayo ng bibili kayo ng uh, mas mahabang damit, husband. Removing weeds meaning simply if you are walking to the mall, um, I think is that in Guilford or or in uh, Westfield. Do not look at uh, Victoria who has no secret. And if you go to the mall, do not look at that uh, poster of Victoria who has no secret. Because otherwise, it's not worth it. Uh, it's not worth the fight after the shopping. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, weaving, weaving is practical things. Colossians 3, 18, 19. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands. Wow. Hallelujah. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband as it's fitting to the Lord. And husband, love your wives and do not do harsh with them. But vice versa. That's very practical thing. Amen. The Bible can be practical sometimes as well. Ephesians 4.29 Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for, for building each other according to each other's need. Amen, church. Amen. Kung ano yung masakit na salita na ayaw mong marinig, sabihin sa'yo, wag mo ring bitawan. Amen. Wag mo ring bitawan. James 1, 19 to 20, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not, does not produce the righteousness that God desires. De, tapusin na natin dun. <laughs> dun tayo na we fail. That is where we fail every time. We, we feel that kailangan, we always have that reaction. Sometimes nawala na yung values na makinig lang tayo. Sometimes, we feel na kailangan meron tayong sagot palagi. And sometimes, even that simple conversation that say, can we talk? But that talk always flare up into something. So my dear brothers and sisters, no, we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Ecclesiastes 7, 8, 9. The end of the matter is that it's beginning. Patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit for anger resides in the lap of fools. Parang kung titignan mo ito in layman's term and simpler terms, my dear brothers and sisters, avoidance is better than cure. Amen. Avoidance. Kung maiiwasan, iwasan na. Kasi mas madali yung iwasan, magsakripisyo, be patient and humble rather than nag-flare up. And then it will open can of worms. Words will be said, words will be released, and sometimes you'll never both the same. Amen, church? So that is weeding. Amen po? And I know that we can give all more example of weeding. But we need to, ano, sunshine, number three, my dear brothers and sisters. In order for that plant to grow, we need sunshine. Amen. Study, scientific study say, uh, says that the plant growth, my dear brothers and sisters, is greatly influenced the, by the direction of sunlight. Sometimes makikita mo, you put a plant in the window. Bakit yung plant nagiging crooked? Instead that straight, nung nilagay mo sa window, nagiging baluktot. Because plant always grows to the direction of sunlight. Amen. And if we look at sunlight, that is the scorching heat of the sun. And sun represents challenges and trials. Amen. And no relationship can be perfected without going through trials and challenges. Amen. How can you say that you have a strong relationship if it has never been tested? Amen, church. A strong, perfect relationship is tested and tried. Sometimes, it is not always the case of nagkaka-problema tayo, meron tayong problema, let's bring in the lawyer. Let's talk. 
let's separate. Hindi po ganun palagi. The Lord lead you to that situation because He has a plan for you. When I give an example for the life of my parents, their relationship was filled with challenges and trials as well. Especially with a dad na hindi makapagsalita and an extreme opposite mom. It's very challenging. It's very challenging. With my dad who is man of few words and my mom who is the opposite, I think I got myself in the side of my mom. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Hallelujah. The scorching of heat of the sun represents challenges. In order for your muscles to grow, muscle men, what do you do? You go to the gym and you subject your muscle to resistance. You lift a heavy weight repetitively. Doon lalaki ang muscle mo. Amen. In order for your bone to become strong, kailangan mong mag-apply ng uh, pressure against it. Amen, church. Amen. Tingnan nyo yung mga taong walang ginagawa. They always end up osteoporotic. Pero tingnan mo yung taong siksik naman sa gawa, sa trabaho. They have a strong bones. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And in order for your relationship to mature and grow, it needs to be tried and tested. Sabi nga natin dun. Amen. Sabi niya rito, 1 Corinthians 3.13b, the fire will test the quality of each person's work. So it is that fire that will reveal the quality of our relationship. Amen. It is that fire that reveals, that will test the quality of our relationship. Gold, my dear brothers and sisters, if you want that gold to become more expensive, keep on processing it. And processing gold is through the fire. Kung gusto mong magkaroon ng puro na 21, 24K, continue, continue to subject that into an intense fire. And masusunog yung mga droth, masusunog yung mga other metal up until the time na gold lang yung matira. Amen. Although it becomes smaller, but it more pricier. Amen po, my dear brothers and sisters. No, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says in here, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, do not give up when facing trials. Do not give up when facing trials. Trials, like what I have said, trials does not mean, or trials is not giving you a reason to give up. Trials is not giving you a reason to stop loving. Trials is not giving you a reason to stop believing, to stop praying, to stop fasting. My dear brothers and sisters, the trials fire you up to continue. The trials fire you up to persevere. So my dear brothers and sisters, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord says, I will fear no evil. Amen. The Lord will lead you in the middle of the storm. The Lord will lead you in the middle of trials. But the most important is do not give up. Amen. Do not give up. My dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you. Ano man yung mga pinangahawakan nyo ngayon and pagod na kayo and you are about to let go, I pray that you will be refreshed, refreshed today and do not give up. Tighten those grip. Tighten those grip, my dear brothers and sisters. Wag nyong bitawan. Wag nyong bitawan, my dear brothers and sisters. Tighten those grip. James 1.12 God blesses those who patiently endure. Amen. Oh, wag nyong bitawan. Because as you patiently tighten your grip, as you patiently hold tighten in your grip, the Lord said, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Afterwards, he says in there, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation because afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised those who love Him. Ano yung pangako ng Panginoon na pinanghahawakan natin? Continue, continue, continue. 
Amen, church. No? So even as a Christiano, maski bilang isang Christiano, even when you say that, ah, I am on this spiritual path, but my dear brothers and sisters, we are not immune. Being a Christian does not prevent us from facing trials and challenges. But it teaches us, my dear brothers and sisters, on how to mature, on how to develop, on how to grow. Amen. Kasi sabi nga natin, a diamond, a silver, a gem, they will not become brighter if you will not polish them. Same as your relationship. Your relationship will not bri become brighter. Your relationship will not grow if you will not be subjected into trials and testings. Amen, church? So my dear brothers and sisters, no, lastly, that small mustard seed, that love, that relationship, it needs to be planted in marriage in order to become a large tree. But in between, sabi natin, we need to water it, we need to weed it, we need the, the heat of the sunshine. But the fourth most important thing, the fourth most important thing, what is that? Resist the snake. Resist the snake. In the Garden of Eden, there are plants in there and there's beautiful plants. And in one of that plant, there is a snake. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is the most important thing. Resist that snake. And we know that who is that snake? Anyone? The devil. That snake is the devil and every schemes that he has. Amen? And this is where our first couple failed. This is where our first parents failed. Even with the best love in your heart. Even with the best intention to nurture it. Even with the longest marriage ceremony. Even with all the gifts. Even with all the watering that you will do. Even with all the weeding that you will do. Even with the sunshine that comes with it. If you are not going to resist the snake. That relationship will fail. Resist that snake my dear brothers and sisters. That is where Adam and Eve fell. If you look at Genesis chapter 3. Basahin ko quickly. Now when the serpent was craftier than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made, he had said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the tree in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruits from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of, your, eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Pay attention. Verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing for the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. Pay attention. She also gave some to her husband who was with her amen husband who was with her and he ate it so my dear brothers and sisters no here makikita natin that in the history Eve was the first snake talker wow <laughs> what a skill my dear brothers and sisters you know that if a snake talk to you if I'm you, I'll gonna run away as far as as fast as I can. It's not gonna be in a, the a best position if an animal starts to talk to you. Run. Amen. But what I want us to see in here, my dear brothers and sisters, is Adam was all along there. Nandun si Adam because said that Eve took off the tree and gave to the husband who is with her. Adam was aware on that conversation all along. So the questions today is, how many husbands stands idle when their wife is talking to the snake? Or how many wives 
stands idle doing nothing like Adam when they can see that the husband is being tormented by the snake. My dear brothers and sisters, when you were joined together, it becomes a co-relationship. It becomes both of you. Amen, church? So if you look at, if you look at that your wife, your husband is going derail, why would you wait for the pastor? Why would you go and say the pastor, that pastor, my wife, I believe has a demonic uh, um, uh, oppression. You are there. Amen, church. Nakita natin yung problema that Eve was casually talking to the snake and Adam was listening in there idly. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is where they fail. Amen. This is where they fail when, a, when the snake managed or successfully uh, deceived Eve. Deceived Eve to give up his fa her faith. To give up her revelation. To give up her calling. And what did she do? The enemy disarmed Eve and e Eve took that fruit, and she ate it. And she gave it to Adam. And Adam, who has been listening all along, knowing what the Lord, the word of the Lord says, she was a willing participant. Amen, church. He was a willing participant. My dear brothers and sisters, resist the snake. James 4, 7, submit yourself then to God. Submit yourself to the will of God for you and for your family. Resist that snake and that snake will flee from you. Amen. If Adam and Eve could have only managed, if Adam and Eve could have only said, no, the snake will not persist. Look at what happened in the Garden of Eden. The same scheme that the snake applied to Adam and Eve, it's the same scheme that he applied to Jesus. But what did Jesus do? He resisted the snake. He resisted the devil. And the devil went away from Jesus. Church, sometimes it is not all about finding the answer. Sometimes the word of the Lord, again, perseverance. Just persevere. Sometimes it's not about kung ano yung tulong na darating. Sometimes it's not about hintayin ko yung pastor na darating na ipagpray ako. No, just stand firm in perseverance. Resist the snake and that snake will live, will flee from you. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we receiving revelation? Church. Resist the snake. Amen. 1 Peter 5.8 Be of sober mind. Be alert. Your adversary, the devil, throws around like a roaring lion, seeking for someone to devour. My dear brothers and sisters, we know the word of God. Let us not change, let us not exchange it with other books, with other wisdom that the world offers. Clear out your mind. Be alert. Alert means if the snake begin to talk to you, resist. Run away. Well, that's the problem with us. Takot tayo sa multo, ano? Pero pagka may nagparamdam, kunyari, instead that you run, lalapit ka pa. Bakit kaya ganun? The same thing with temptation. Resist the temptation, my dear brothers and sisters. Resist that snake. Because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. If we read at Genesis chapter 3, can I, in, can I, ano, natutulog tayo eh. Can I ask, uh, is it okay? Uh, um, uh, anniversary celebrant. Can I ask the help of, ano, let's choose our, Youngest couple, uh, Sister Milita and Brother Trebor. You're our youngest couple. 
21 years, ilang years yung sa inyo, Sister Joanna? O three years, ilang years yung sa inyo? 15, no? So you are our youngest couple. Is it okay if you come here in front? Hello, hi. Is it okay, Trev, Milita? Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. No, no, it's okay. Gab, it's okay. If you stand in here. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Can, is it possible to hand me that water? I just want to read the passage, mga kapatid. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. Pay attention. Sabi niya rito, the man, no, no, the, the man said, Verse 11, verse 11, it says in there, The Lord said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, Pay attention what Adam said. Amen. Pay attention here. Adam said, The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. No? So here we can see that Adam blamed Eve. Adam blamed Eve. The man that you gave me, gave me the fruit to eat. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate it. Of course, it was never our fault, isn't it? It was never our fault. It's always the fault of the opposite party. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what happens in most relationships. No, pay attention. I'll give you this, Trev. Hallelujah. This is you in relationship, in marriage. This is you. This is what you have inside. Amen. Of course, growing young. If your friends, you youth, If your friends come and they bump into you, what do you do? You move away. If someone challenges you, what you do? You move away. You stop being friends anymore. You, you, you don't go and visit them anymore. But eventually, that remains you. That is you. And you get married. And who is the, all, who is the person that is always next to you? It's gonna be your wife or your partner, your wife. And what do they do to you every day? What do you do? What do you do to him every day? What do you do to him every day? Uh, bump him. What do you do to them every day? Huh? Hey, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Your wife will do that every day to you. They always bump into you. And purely because it's Trevor's anniversary, they keep on doing that. 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 And your wife, your husband said, let's go to the church. Okay, I'm finished changing five minutes. And the wife will, will the husband will start to say, you said five minutes, ten minutes already, fifteen minutes already. You said you're gonna bump me only once, but you keep on bumping me. So my dear brothers and sisters, whose fault that Trevor is wet? Whose fault? Of course, Milita, because Milita keep on bumping. Amen. But is that not what Adam told the Lord? The woman that you gave me, gave me eight. But my dear brothers and sisters, is it Milita's fault that you have a water in your cup? Anyone? Is it Milita's fault that you have a water in your cup? No. What only Milita did is expose what you have inside you. If we change that water to an empty one, Trevor will say, it doesn't matter. Bump unto me as much as you want. Magsawa ka. Amen. So, thank you very much. Careful. So my dear brothers and sisters, what I just want to say is, let's not always look at the other party. A hands cannot clap If only one. Amen. 
A hands cannot clap if only one. And whatever issues and hurdles that is challenging us right now, that is challenging that small seed in order to grow as the largest plant, whatever that snake that is trying to challenge that plant in, in that plant, my dear brothers and sisters, it was not Milita's fault. It was always us with everything that we have inside us. Amen. Kung meron tayong temper, is it other people's fault that we get upset and annoyed? What did the other people only do is expose what we have. Expose that temper that we have that is always been there. Amen, church. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, Ephesians 4.27, it says in there, do not give the devil a foothold. Amen? Kung ano man yung nasa sa atin, let go and release. Ephesians 6.11, put on the full armor of God. Next time, uh, Treb, put on the full armor so that you will not get wet. Amen? Put on the full armor of God so that when the scheme of the enemy comes, you will be able to stand against. Amen, church? And once again, blessed Sunday and blessed anniversary to all our lovely couples who are celebrating their anniversary today. Before we end, can I ask for the music, uh, the youth music youth to come? Hallelujah. Let's sing that song. Um, uh, it's okay, we'll, we'll sort this out later. It's okay, it's okay. We'll sort this out later. All right, youth, come and let's... Uh, Sing that song. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Father, thank you so much for gathering us today. And it's okay, Brad. We will sort it out later. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. So just be careful on that. So let's stand up, church, and let's uh, worship the Lord. And be before we end, I just want to remind us all especially all the couples and this is something are we paying attention couples this is something that we always forget this is something that we always neglect this is something that the life of a couple, the life of a married, a married life is always something na nakakalimutan, my dear brothers and sisters. God is the initiator of marriage. Ang Panginoon po ang gumawa ng pag-iisang dibdib. And when God created marriage in the Garden of Eden, it was not designed between a man and wife. Are you paying attention, church? We are finishing. But I don't want us to miss this because this will greatly change our situation. Sometimes, if we go towards the pattern of this world, you found someone, you love them, you nurture that love and you want to enter into that marriage. Sometimes we go to the pattern of this world and you and that opposite person, you go in marriage. That's why it always or it usually fails. My dear brothers and sisters, the original pattern of marriage, if you look at the Garden of Eden, the man, the wife, and God in the middle. God in the center. Amen, church? That is the original pattern of marriage. The husband, the wife, and God in the center. God in the middle. Amen, church? Now, the pattern of the world is just about the man and the woman, and they go in their own ways. That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that sometimes, or most of the times, it becomes unsuccessful. And we thought that sometimes 
finding out someone else is the answer and the reason. It's not always like that. Because without the Lord in the middle, it's always gonna be dysfunctional. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray and we'll uh, leave it to our young music team. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you so much for all your good countenance. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather together today, Lord, to honor you and to worship you and to put you in the center and in the middle of everything that we are doing today. And Lord, we thank you for the learning. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the teaching that we have heard from you today. That Father God, we pray that you inculcate those on our heart. You plant them in our mind, Father God, that from that small mustard seed, it will grow up, Lord, to be the largest of all plants. But we know, Father, that it has to go through the process. But whatever processes that are in there, if we remain committed to you, if we remain submitted to you, if we remain surrendered to you, and the perfect and complete finished work of your Son Jesus in the cross, we know, Father God, that though we pass in the middle, in the eye of the storm, that you are going to be with us, Father God. We continue to bless you and we continue to honor you. We thank you, Lord, for relationships. We thank you, Father God, for marriage. We thank you, Lord, for the life of each and every couple that are here, the couples who are celebrating their anniversary today. We thank you so much, Father God. But most importantly, we thank you for the life of each and every one. We know and we do believe by faith that we were able, Father God, to steer, oh God, that desire in them to establish that relationship with you, to establish that relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ, until the day He comes. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
celebrating their anniversary today. Can you please uh, welcome each and everyone? Uh, can I join each and everyone in welcoming our brothers and sisters? Uh, can we welcome them in the front? Just be careful. There is some wet surface in here. Hallelujah. 